With the 2016 US presidential elections closing in, the debates have become increasingly precarious. The gap between honesty and dishonesty is vague. Both Clinton and Trump have been caught lying, concealing and spinning information in the duration of their presidential campaigns. Why leaders lie? The truth about lying in international politics by John Mersheimer provides a fresh new perspective on the reasons why politicians tend to deceive the public. Now the book was published back in 2011, so it doesn't cover the current presidential elections. It does however provide a unique explanation on why and how politicians lie, conceal or spin information. The subject of political lies is not only extremely interesting, but its relevance is is as important as ever. My name is Shirvan and welcome to a review for the bookshelf. Mersheimer, who teaches political science at the University of Chicago, is known for his detailed and thought-provoking works. However, Why Leaders Lie is different. Rather than a content-rich book with clear answers, it's more of a comprehensive essay and with about 200 pages, it's a rather short read. That's not to say it's not finished, but the thing is, there are hardly any sources which deal with lying in international politics. There are, of course, a great deal of books about lying, but very few touch on the subject of international lies. The lack of sources is actually what inspired the author to write the book. Since lying in international politics is virtually an untouched subject, Mersheimer starts by explaining his definition of deception. Lying, after all, is a form of deception, but not all deception is lying. Concealment and spinning, the other two forms of deception, are considered tolerable because unlike lying, neither of these two actually makes a false statement. Yet to conceal or spin information is not the truth either. The author then continues and explains how lying is considered the most distasteful of all deceptions. To call someone a liar is usually taken as an offense. However, concealment and spinning are actually part of our daily life, so it's acceptable. For example, a person interviewing for a job is actually allowed to conceal information on his resume and is in fact expected to spin information regarding his skills and experiences. The same logic can be applied to politicians. President Obama will spin information in a positive light when questioned on the economic prospects of the US. His opponents will do the same except spin information in a negative light. Neither side is lying, but no one is telling the truth either. The general public is willing to tolerate concealment and spinning of information since these are part of the human condition. In some cases, even lies are considered tolerable by the public as long as the intended policy succeeds. There are politicians who have overtly lied and got caught, however, the only reason why the public reacts upset is because his policy failed, not because he lied. Thus, the ruling is, lie, conceal and spin for a successful policy will excuse deceit. Mersheimer goes much deeper into these theories and he sketches an image of international politics that is rather dark and even immoral. In several instances it reminds one of The Prince by Machiavelli. Yet the portrayal of international relations is as close to reality as it gets. In doing so, the author provides several variations of deceits used most commonly in international affairs. The first is interstate lies. These are usually meant to gain an advantage or to deny the opponent an advantage. This can be accomplished by minimizing or exaggerating the importance of a particular military capability. For example, Israel lied to the United States in the 1960s about its nuclear weapons program because it feared that Washington would force Jerusalem to shut down the project if it acknowledged what was really going on at the Negev Nuclear Research Center. The second variation is fear-mongering. These are told to the public to inflate a threat. The purpose behind this is to justify an aggressive foreign policy towards a specific target. For example, there was a lot of deceit on the part of the Bush administration prior to the invasion of Iraq. A number of key figures of the Bush administration lied about the foolproof evidence that Saddam had weapons of mass destruction and about the implications that Saddam bore responsibility for the September attacks. 
Eventually, it turned out that Iraq had been free of WMD stocks since the mid-1990s and that Saddam was actually a fierce opponent of radical Islamic groups such as Al-Qaeda. In fact, there is evidence linking Al-Qaeda to the House of Saud, however, since this is strategic sensitive information with dramatic geopolitical implications, the Obama administration has declined to publish these documents. This kind of deceits is referred to as strategic cover-ups. This variation of lies is meant to conceal information from the public and other governments which could harm a nation. The book mentions several more variations of deceits, including nationalist myths, liberal lies, social imperialism, and ignoble cover-ups. All of them are explained in detail with many examples, but in essence everything comes down to survival. Unlike citizens, a country has no one else to turn to when its survival is at stake. There is no global police or justice system. There is no higher authority. As a country, you're on your own. Thus, a government must provide for its own security. This is often accomplished by gaining power and influence at the expense of other countries. It's an endless struggle for survival at the expense of others. Ultimately, that's what geopolitics comes down to. Lying, much like war, espionage, diplomacy is a form of statecraft. Usually, an elected leader will lie for strategic purposes. There are, of course, some leaders who have lied for personal interests, but why leaders lie mostly deals with the strategic lies, not the selfish ones. Perhaps one of the most thought-provoking theories is that democratically elected leaders are more likely to lie to their own people than dictators. Common sense implies otherwise, yet Mearsheimer argues that elected leaders such as Kennedy, Carter, Bush and Obama are the ones whose democratic traditions push them to mislead the public that elected them. For example, President Roosevelt lied about a skirmish between a German submarine and an American destroyer in 1941. The president intended to use this lie to propel the United States into World War II. Another example is President Johnson who lied about the Gulf of Tonkin incident in 1964 to escalate the war in Vietnam. Basically, democratically elected governments are more likely to lie and deceive because unlike dictators, they need public opinion on their side to go to war or implement political changes or economic reforms. What's more is that leaders are less likely to lie to each other than to their own people. The reason is that the ramifications of lying on an international stage can damage potential relationships and international credibility. Plus, there is no trust among leaders. For example, any form of communication between Obama and Putin will involve spinning and concealing and will lack any shred of trust. So, since there is no trust, there is no point in lying. So the communication between leaders is more truthful than the communication with the public. Historical examples of leaders lying and deceiving are plentiful throughout the book. However, most of the instances mentioned in the book are strictly related to the Western world, which begs the question, what role do cultural differences play? Some cultures may see concealment and spinning as honorable actions, whilst others may despise it. The choice to focus extensively on the Western culture limits the book's depth of field. Many questions still remain unaddressed. Overall, the book does not hold all the answers, nor does it address all forms of lies in international politics. Rather, the true intention of the author is to start a discussion within the Faculty of Political Science on the subject of deception in politics this is a goal Mersheimer certainly achieves in Why Leaders Lie. And considering the fact that there are nearly no other sources on this subject, Why Leaders Lie is a unique book. It's fun, short, and it has an interesting premise. If you are a student or a scholar of international relations, or even a concerned citizen, Why Leaders Lie is worth your time. This was a review for the bookshelf, check out the playlist for more sources on geopolitics. I also want to extend my special thanks to the following top contributors on Patreon. Their support and that of many others have made this report possible. And if you want to help with the costs of the show, please visit our Patreon page in the description. For now, thank you for watching, take care and salut.